on some of the neighborhood. I mean. uh, some of the restaurants. Uh, Rio is very famous for the steakhouse where we have uh, very nice halal options. We have a lot of halal options in many restaurants, but for the steakhouse houses, it's easy to adapt. Uh, most of them have a beautiful view of the sea and it's quite an experience. Uh, it's a, it's an, I don't know if you, all of you are used with our steakhouse here, it's uh, all you can eat style and you have, uh, you have the buffet and you can serve whatever you want and the, the waiters go around with the food on each table. Uh, let's see how this is going to change after the, the actual moment we are going now, right? We might have a review on how this, we have to go on a new normal for the, the steakhouses. We have been discussing this here. And some very nice restaurants from a Baroque style downtown to great views. I mean, there is a lot. It's a very cosmopolitan city. This is uh, my favorite option of nightclubs, the real scenario. You have a lot of locals, so we can take the group inside this. Uh, this is just one of them, there are several others, but a big um, uh, colonial construction. And inside you can be with the locals, dancing, learn how to dance the samba, see how people do, dance with the locals. You don't have to be totally isolated if you don't want to. It's a, it's a great experience. So this is, uh, pretty much about Rio. I don't know if you have any questions, if you want to leave for the final, if there is another pool, let me know more. Should I, should I go on? Can you hear me? Please, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, there is one question uh, uh, before you continue. Uh, it's coming from uh, Kadir and he's asking uh, about uh, favela visits, whether we can, if we can do favela visits. Yes, we can. We can. We do a lot. We have some, uh, some very nice partners uh, in the main uh, favelas, which nowadays we call communities in Rio. And uh, you can, uh, depending on the size of the group, you can mm -hmm. go inside one of the houses and maybe have like a snack in one of the local houses. We have organized uh, football uh, matches with the locals in one of the favelas, which is quite a nice experience. Or just do the favela tour where you see some of the NGOs that are inside the favelas, the kids' school, how people live and understand. It's a, it's a whole city within a city, actually. So it's quite interesting. And, and we do that. We don't market a lot because uh, some, sometimes people feel, you know, have special feelings about it, but it's, it's a tour that's feasible and nice. For groups, I would say up to 2025, or we have to divide the group because the favelas are narrow, you know, narrow streets and all that. Good idea. Uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is also another question from Banu. Banu, you, you want to raise your question uh, before we continue? I guess it is about uh, Rio. Please uh, mute yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, wish you a healthy and good day ahead as well. So my questions will take in the metro effect. First of all, thank you for the nice presentation. And my questions are about the Rio Carnival. And um, I do know that it's quite difficult to reserve even uh, only one single room during the carnival. So in terms of making a booking, how long ago we need to book for individuals and mice groups? Can you please kindly give us some idea about this? Because this is important. Thank you so much. And another question. And what are the measures taken uh, in Rio, basically for Rio, for COVID-19 at the hotels? Uh, can you please kind of give us some general idea, not specific, I know, but this also gives us some, uh, the chance of making a comparison with our country as well. Thank you so much in, in advance. You, you, thank you, Oya. Uh, we will come back as per the COVID end of the presentation. But in the meantime, Rachel, uh, can you uh, advise Oya how, how much advance do they need to book in case of uh, they want to join the uh, carnival? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Oya, for your question. Uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, usually the tickets for carnival start getting sold in September. That's when we acquire the tickets with the, the better price from the official 
um, agency here that gets, it's not an agency, it's the league of the Samba schools. Uh, and by then, by then the bookings start to grow because then people define, you know, how many, how many are coming, how many are not coming. So I would say, uh, September is a good period. Uh, start planning on August and book in September. But if you do have later on, um, ads, uh, people that need uh, hotels, we usually have some blocks in some hotels and we can help you with that. Let us know if you are, uh, on a shorter period than that until between September and November, it's still quiet. Well, to, to book, uh, after that, when summer gets hot and people get more into carnival, then a lot of the hotels get overbooked, but we can all, we can always help you with that. Uh, usually on a, a group doesn't decide to come to Brazil in, in very short notice for a period like carnival. So I would say three, four months in advance, it's enough. Uh, and, uh, and, and if you, just let us know because we have a lot of connections. We've been here for over 30 years. We partner with the main hotels in the city, so we can always help you uh, and find the, the correct space for your groups. Thank you so much indeed for your replies. Um, wish you good luck and we will try to convince our groups to choose Brazil then. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to move to Iguazu Falls, which is the classic um, duo with Rio de Janeiro. So most groups do Rio for three, four nights and then one, two nights in uh, Iguazu Falls. Okay. I would say it's about uh, two hours flying from Rio. And I would allow at least two nights over there because of the flights, the time at the airport and all that. So... Uh, it's right in the border of Brazil, Argentina, and uh, Paraguay. And the, the main thing over there is the falls itself. The falls divide the countries, uh, especially in one side is Brazil and the other side is Argentina. So it's a way for you to see a little bit of the Argentinian side too and visit another country in a trip to Brazil. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Canada, but just to give you an idea, Iguazu Falls, the falls have about five times the size of Niagara Falls uh, up in the border of Canada. So it's pretty big and impressive, and it's an amazing destination. It's very good for families, individuals, honeymooners, and for groups too. We have some very nice programs over there. So main hotels, there's the Belmont. It's the only one inside the National Park. Uh, we are a diamond club with the Belmont Hotel, so we have very nice um, rates with them. So let us know if you have a group that would like to stay there. It's amazing. It's a colonial property. Uh, if you want to go a little bit more budget on the way to the, to the falls, to the park, you have a few other hotels like the Recanto Cataratas, is a very nice resort, the Bourbon, the Viali, just to give you some ideas. There's a lot of hotels in, in Iguazu, if you let me know. Let us know the um, profile of the group. We can find the correct one for your clients. The main tours, Half Day Brazilian Falls and Argentina Falls. And here a question always comes up, which is, ah, isn't it too much to see both sides? And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it's not. You know, usually people take one day in the Brazilian side, one day in the Argentinian side. There are different experiences. The Argentinian side, you have a train that goes around and, uh, and, and the whole setup, you see the, the falls from the underneath. And in Brazil, you go on the top of the falls for most of it and a lot of the walking tours. So definitely, if your clients go there, they have to take these two sides of the tour because they're different, they're complementary. It's uh, uh, one, I mean, one complement the other. And uh, if you give them just one day in the falls, it's not gonna be enough. Uh, then a must is the Makuku Safari Boat Tour, or we also have the Grand Adventure. It's a zodiac that goes all the way close, sometimes underneath the falls, depending on how, uh, how, uh, how is the, the current. And it's really, really emotional. It's a, it's a true adventure. It's not just a boat ride. And it's beautiful to see the, the strength of the water going by. Uh, for nature lovers, we also have the Birds Park over there. It's it's a park where the birds are free inside this big space and you have a lot of the endemic species of Brazil. Some of the restaurants, uh, the Porto Canoas, it's uh, inside the park or the La Selva in the other, in the Argentinian side. We have an evening show there, which is the Rafaín that shows the, the three 
from tears, what we call, so it's a little bit of, of uh, culture from Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay in the same show. Or if you want to do something more of scale, you can do the Casa de Chef, for instance, that you can see the, the chef cooking. There's a few uh, cooking experiences over there too. Uh, I'm just trying to give you a little flavor. It's a lot, there's a lot more to do in all the, in all the destinations, but I would stay here all day. <laughs> So uh, that's it for Iguazu. We move into Salvador. If anybody has any questions about Iguazu, uh, if not, I'll move on. Just let me know. Yeah, I think I think we can move on to to Salvador. Okay. So uh, Salvador is going to be yes. Salvador. Okay. How far is Salvador from uh, Rio? Uh, it's about three hours flying. Salvador is uh, it's, uh, one of the first capitals of Brazil. Uh, it's a UNESCO patrimony city. The center of the city is all kept as it was in the 1800s. Uh, you have a lot of Baroque art in that city and uh, a lot of uh, churches to visit. We have 365 different style of churches, Baroque style, all covered with gold. It's really, uh, I would say, an open sky museum that you can visit in the city of Salvador. This is the place I was telling you about, that it's the beginning of our coconut coast, where you have, you know, the more laid back, uh, relaxed, the norther you go in Brazil, the warmer it gets. So it's even warmer up here and the, the climate doesn't change much around the year. And uh, you, have, you are uh, not far from a few resorts, regions too. So this is a mix of beach, relax, and uh, uh, Brazilian history and culture. I would say three nights, two to three nights in, in Salvador. Uh, they also have some very good hotels. The Fasano, it's, it's a Brazilian family. They have uh, very high-end hotels in Rio Salvador, Sao Paulo, uh, the main cities. The Fera, this would be the high-end. The Vila Bahia, the, it's a, like an a inn, a small hotel, very cozy, like a charm hotel, or the Wish or the Mercure, so a little bit of everything, depending on the profile of the group. Main tours in Salvador, is the historical tour where you understand about how the, the Portuguese arrived in Brazil, all, the, all, all that was built in our country from the beginning of the colonization, uh, the story of slavery that was very strong in Salvador too. So there's a lot of understanding of the country, of the culture of the country and the history uh, when visiting Salvador. And it's very nice because the downtown of the city, it's all kept. So you can feel the, the emotion from those colonial years. Uh, the panoramic city tour of Salvador, it's also nice because the city is divided in two um, stories. So you have the upper city and the, 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 the down city. And uh, you can see on the beach side of this and, the, and how the city developed spread out through the beaches south and north of Salvador. Quite beautiful, quite beautiful tour. Also, we can take a schooner and enjoy the Bay of Bahia, the uh, Bahia de Todos os Santos. Say. It's beautiful, a lot of small islands. We can have lunch in one of the islands, enjoy a little bit of time on the beach and in the sand on board with one of the schooners. Uh, side tours from Salvador, you can either have a full day at Praia do Forte, which is this small village, quite nice a fisherman village. Here we have also one of the nicest resorts in Brazil, a Tivoli resort uh, that can also be an extension for, uh, for a group or individuals. And also the tour of Cachoeira. It's where we made the Brazilian uh, cigars. So it's a, a big culture over there on the cigars. Uh, and there's a lot of parties as Rio have carnival, which is quite big. Salvador have a lot of part, uh, parties related to the deities that they believe in. Uh, they have a whole different religion it's called the Candomblé uh, that comes from Africa. And uh, the patroness of the city is Yemanja, which is the goddess of the sea for them. So it's a big gather of uh, more than 2 million people together going out on boats and we can take a group taking part in this uh, sea procession. It's quite interesting and nice. 
Uh, also, we can arrange boogie tours on the on the Virgin beaches outside of uh, Salvador for those that want to enjoy a little bit more of the heat up the, there. Uh, so this is uh, all about the three destinations that I picked to talk to you about today. So Rio de Janeiro, Iguazu Falls and Salvador are the destinations that we usually sell the most, are the first uh, three destinations to be visited in the country for a first comer. Okay, and I'm going to update you a little bit about uh, the COVID as uh, Oya asked me. And of course, this is, I mean, the big theme of the moment all over the world. Or more was that you guys are almost about to start reopening again, right? In uh, in Turkey, I was very happy to to hear that. Uh, here, it took us a little while for the virus to get to Brazil, so we got hit about a month after Europe. So we are in this, um, I would say, the worst period of the of the COVID infection. It's hitting us right now at this moment. Uh, yeah. But it gives us a lot of hope to see Europe going back, you know, starting to reopen again. So we think it's just for us to shelter a little bit more and wait for it to pass, right? Just, just dive and let the wave go by. So uh, the first thing to think about is that Brazil is a continental country. So numbers here might seem very uh, uh, big, you know, large, but we have 200 million inhabitants in Brazil. So uh, zero view, Virgo, zero, 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 five percent of that is already a lot, if you think in uh, European and Middle Eastern terms, right? Uh, so here you have the numbers. We had, uh, as from yesterday, around 150,000 cases confirmed in Brazil. Uh, the local governments are enforcing the social distance, distance measures all over the country. We have a little bit of differences uh, in each one. So the federal government uh, gives uh, one way, but the local governments can take their own uh, measures. So it depends on city by city. In the northeast of Brazil, where I showed you where Salvador starts and then go all the way up to the north and to the Amazon, a lot of cities are on total lockdown already. And uh, in the South, uh, some cities are in partial lockdown. For instance, Rio de Janeiro is facing partial lockdown. Just uh, the social distancing started uh, 50 days ago. And this week, the mayor uh, decreed this uh, partial lockdown to avoid the spread. So a lot of new, uh, so restaurants and bars were closed and uh, the hairdressers were closed and all this. And now we have more strict measures. <laughs> We have to cut our own hair at home. <laughs> um, and it's probably for the next uh, 15 to 20 days to avoid the spread and, and help to keep it from, uh, especially from hitting the, the favelas and the poorer communities that have uh, less options of, uh, of uh, being social distances since they are so all, you know, live together in small places. Uh, one good thing is that in Brazil we have the Fiocruz Epidemiology Center. It's a world reference in epidemiology and vaccine researches. Uh, so it's a, it's a reference for the, the uh, World Health Organization. So this is good. We are very uh, advanced on the researches here in Brazil for vaccine and how to deal with uh, the new medicines and the tests for new medicines and all this. And the government's giving some special support for tourism and general business, like tax exemptions, covering some of the salaries and wages of people from 30 to 70%, depending on the type of business, to help um, the business not to be hit so badly by the economic crisis. Uh, our initiatives towards COVID, and I talk about not only Valpax initiatives, but the trade initiatives. So as Oya asked, Hotels and restaurants that work uh, that we work with are adopting these safety protocols uh, according to the World Health Organization guidelines. We are having the guidelines being uh, uh, not developed but adapted. Uh, one of the main organizations that uh, that gives um, safety protocols and uh, it's like an ISO, uh, the Bureau Veritas has came out with uh, the, the protocol to be followed by the hotel. So cleaning protocols, distance, um, virtual check-ins, time, uh, time that uh, a that, uh, room is 
closed before another guest comes in. So all these are being put into a, a big protocol verification and the partners are adapting uh, to be able to follow all these protocols by the time they open again, which is probably going to be in the end of June. That's what we're talking about uh, here in Brazil. The hotels should be open in the end of June. Uh, the same thing with restaurants, you know, so new measures, new distance between the tables and all this. The good thing about Brazil is that we are very big. So the cities are big and we have space. So restaurants are usually large and we can, it's, it's not going to be hard to adapt in that way. Um, transportation partners are also adapting all the cleaning protocols and um, hygienization according to the World Organization guidelines. Uh, health and safety items will be adopted on groups operations. So we, we're going to be able to offer you the masks, alcohol and, and gel, uh, the minimum distance between the coaches. And this we all going to discuss together in each program planning. So uh, we are seeing some of our clients asking for two seats per person, as we do with the Japanese clients, for instance, they already work like that nowadays. We have two seats per person. Uh, and uh, we see a, a few of the clients now worried about that, not having one right beside the other, unless it's a family. So these are the, some of the measures we are seeing in coming up. I know it's all new, right? We've been here for two uh, months and a half only with this new disease, so a lot. It's going to be um, under construction, we would say, right? We have a lot to adapt to you and, and learning also from, from you guys that are opening up before we are. <laughs> um, the good, another good thing is that Brazil has a lot of open air activities and venues so that help us to, to reopen again without being closed uh, in a museum, for instance, or having to be closed inside the house. The climate helps a lot since we don't have a, a strong winter here. It's pretty warm all year round. Our coldest year in Rio de Janeiro would be around 18 degrees uh, centigrade Celsius. So it doesn't really get cold. So we can be on open air spaces most time of the year. Uh, we're going to have health partners supporting the group's operations too. So we can be discussing in some markets to have uh, temperature measures before entering a venue if we have a closed venue or or before going in a meeting room. You want it to be built for your clients, but we are already partnering with people that can, and partners that can help us on these solutions, uh, all the type of uh, health safety solutions that you may need. Also the force major uh, contract clauses that we're gonna make sure to enforce on your behalf with our local partners here and, and uh, be prepared to cover any problems with pandemic. Of course, this is all new and a lot is being discussed on this, on this uh, theme too. But we can say that on our side, uh, we managed to, to go over each and every contract with the clients that we had for the beginning of the year with no problem at all with our local suppliers here. And also training protocols for our guides that are the ones that are on site with our clients to help uh, the, the, the people to understand how to behave and what to do and amuse them while they have sometimes to wait to go in one of the venues that now might take a little bit longer. But also the online, uh, the online registration for Corcovado, Sugarloaf, you know, the main visitor points. Today we already have timings established, but now the timings are gonna be spread out a little bit more so we don't have queues or anything like that. For our groups, uh, the, the larger groups, uh, more than, 40, we already don't usually queue. We have a, a, a whole train or cable car uh, for that group uh, hired specially. And the trends in COVID, uh, we see what we are talking about in Brazil nowadays is that hotels are probably going to reopen in the end of June. Uh, the pickup of reservations is starting from September 2020. It will be the beginning. That's what we feel at the moment. International airlines are resuming the flights uh, back also in June, uh, the ones that stopped flying for a while and increasing the number of flights as of September, as Omur also uh, talked about, right? The, the connection with, with Turkey here. So 
uh, let's see. It's so, we still, I mean, we're still on the guessing side, right? Nobody's sure about what's going to happen, but that's the, the trends that are on the news and on, the, on our uh, forums of tourism here in Brazil. Uh, one good thing that came out of all this is the great solidarity that we see in among people, you know, people helping each other, the communities helping each other, younger people going out to buy uh, things for the older people and, and, and people just donating their time to help other people. So this is something that I think is coming to stay. Uh, and we're going to feel this even more on the ambience that I was telling you about. That that's all about Brazil and Brazilians. Another trend we see is virtual site inspections, and we are already working with this uh, uh, with our partners, the hotels and the venues. So some of them already have put together the site inspections that we can take you on that. It's a pity because I much rather have you come in here and, and having your site inspections. But while we can't do that, so we're going to provide the virtual ones for you. And also, uh, we have been developing this last two weeks a virtual team building experience with a Brazilian flavor. So we, we built with the Carnival Experience partners we were telling you about, some drum classes, uh, caipirinha classes, also the mask, how to make your mask with the things you have in the house. The drum workshop can be even with your fry, frying pan and a cooking a spoon, you know, and we can bring together this for for a company that are looking into motivate their team while they are all working from home office. So if you have any companies that might be interested in that, that's something we can sell with a little bit of Brazilian flavor too. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have our website that we can give you for the ones that still don't have. I know a, a lot of you already have that access, the access, and you can enter here your login and password and get access to our tariffs, online tariffs and programs. So you can have an idea of what we have to offer, compare prices with the time change if you're not there, or if uh, Omur and the DMC rep cannot help you right at that moment, you have this uh, 24 hours online access to our descriptions, pictures, hotels, names, locations, and prices. So this is a little bit about us. I'm sorry if I was long, there's a lot, Brazil is a big country, and I hope this was useful for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us.